Okay, continuing on our journey uh, through time here in our corn museum, uh, we're looking at some uh, flints here. And again, uh, this is a, a, a nature of the flints that are very early flowering. And uh, we like those flints because we can get our uh, crop um, mature very quickly. And um, as we work them through the years, um, that was a very important component uh, to make sure that we got maturity uh, early. You can see here we have um, a purple husk, a purple plant, and um, that's just, a, and that's a flint. Uh, very attractive looking, um, and you can kind of see um, some of our Indian corn that we have today kind of coming through uh, some of these varieties actually. Uh, we do use in the breeding world, some of us uh, will use the purple stalks as a marker in our uh, breeding and research plots as um, a place to just to verify that we're on the, the right uh, rows and we have the right planting order in case there was an error. If the purple was in the wrong spot, uh, we, would er we would know early on as the purple starts to express at a very young age uh, that we have uh, maybe a planting error somewhere and we can just uh, track back. So that's kind of a unique use for the purple other than it's just really a, kind of a unique and an attractive uh, plant. And as we move through the, the time here, um, we, we come through all these flints to uh, one of the most popular uh, varieties that the industry has held is the Austerlin uh, Reed Yellow Dent. Uh, this thing here has a lot of um, history to it and it's very important in the in the progression of corn through time. Actually, uh, the way I understand it is that the uh, this was intermixed with some flint corns and uh, this was the origins of our first inbred uh, of varieties uh, in our inbred um, uh, breeding uh, style. Uh, we went from open pollinated inbred uh, breeding as these cross pollinated. So this uh, this dent would actually cross pollinated with the flint and then we uh, created some uh, inbred succession in the in the uh, breeding world. So, and beforehand uh, we would, if you take a look at our ears here, um, you can see how large these ears are. And in the open pollinated world, uh, we would save uh, these ears. We'd go out to the field in the fall and we'd find the plants that are standing, that are the most attractive, they're still healthy, and we found the largest ears. And we would save those ears uh, for the following year. And um, many years ago, I worked for a company that had um, originated back in 1910, 1911 with some drought years. And actually uh, how the company originated was they saved these uh, large ears and they put them in wooden barrels and stored them. And the following season um, there wasn't very many, uh, uh, much corn uh, to be planted around there. And uh, they started a seed company actually on uh, saving their seeds. So um, it was very interesting. And as you can see another thing that we're looking at here is um, again plant health. Uh, uh, we've come through the time and uh, I've increased our plant health. If you, if you can see, we have uh, ear smut coming in on this plant here uh, just uh, as, a, as a result of either injury or just, um, just uh, the plant is very uh, susceptible to that. So uh, that was another thing. Uh, that improved uh, through the time here. Uh, but back to uh, the Austerlin Reed Yellow Dent, uh, we'll be moving into another variety. This one and uh, the Lancaster Surecrop have the, are two of the uh, origins of the corn as we know it today, and we'll be visiting a lot more about that and the importance of that in the history and the timeline of our corn productions.